Car left, clear oh, left. Oh, radar's gone off. On your right. Clear right. Alright guys, hello and welcome to another race video. So it's been a very long time since we've driven the uh, GR86 in iRacing, but we're driving around Mosport for this week's race, which is one that I couldn't pass up. Absolutely love this circuit. I haven't raced these that I can remember in closed cabin cars before. I remember I did a week once a couple of years ago where I, uh, I must have done about 30 races in the F3 cars and absolutely loved it. It was an absolute uh, slam fest, but... <laughs> It was a lot of fun. So I'm hoping that we can have a good race today. Now I qualified in third on the grid for today's race, but I did make a small mistake and I was about maybe 0.4 of a second off where I should have been pace wise. So I'm hoping that maybe we can uh, challenge these two guys ahead today, maybe even for the win. I might be being a little bit overly optimistic there, but we'll definitely give it our best shot today. Hopefully we can have a nice clean one. Gotta say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video as well, Acetech Sim Sports. Now, if you haven't seen already, they've just dropped the price of their Pagani version of their Invicta pedals, which is really, really great. So uh, check them out via the link down in the description below. We'll actually have a set of those pedals here pretty soon to check out as well. So keep an eye on our socials for that. They operate in pretty much exactly the same way as the uh, Invicta pedals do, which we've checked out and absolutely love. Ran them on the rig for quite some time. But uh, yeah, keen to check out the Pagani version of those pedals. So check them out by the link in the description below. As I said, thank again, thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. So let's get ready for the start here. Down to second gear, bunch up nice and close. Hopefully no silly business here. Be ready. We bunched up a little bit there. We we're lucky we didn't go, get go, rear-ended. Yeah. Somebody always does okay, that. Okay, well, 15 minutes left. That's 15 minutes. Car left. Clear left. Oh, the leader's gone off. On your right. Clear right. Woo. So we overtook both those cars that were ahead of us at the start. Alright, let's see if we can catch back up with the guy that jumped the start there. Although he didn't really jump the start, he just uh, didn't get bunched up like the rest of us did. He was able to take advantage of that silly pause right before the green. Point seven of a second gap behind, point seven of a second gap in front. Let's make this happen, guys. It's been a while since we've had a win. I feel like I might just say, he came all the way from seventh place? How did that, We're looking forward to seeing the replay of that. But that gives me even more hope. Let's see what we can do. Just turn in like that. Left. Wow. Car right. What was that all about? Hold your line. Clear right. Alright, we're back where we were now. After all that. Definitely have to have a look at the replay of that one, but I feel like I uh, had every right to be where I was. He was very slow through the corner before and uh, then just decided to chop me. I'm sure it'll be a 50% of the internet will say it's my fault. 50% of it will 50% of you will say that it was his fault. But we'll look at the replay after the race for sure. All right, we've got a good run here. Left side. If we get a slipstream Hold past him. Hold your line. Hold your line. Still there. Clear left. On your left. 
clear left. It was very slow there through the final turn. Side. Hold your line. The inside line here. Hold your line. Clear left. With P2, the leader has just done a 134.3. I feel like we can win this one, boys. <laughs> As long as we don't get in another incident or we'll make a mistake, I think we're in with a chance here. Oh, what? <laughs> it's so heavy on the brakes there. Managed to hold the line straight though and not take him out. That was a bit scruffy, but I don't even know what happened there. He just slowed up so much. At least we managed to have a square contact there. Left so we side. didn't spin him. He just Hold slowed up so much more. He was on the brakes, but then he just kept Hold braking. Your line. Even more and more and more. Hold your uh, line. Let's go for it. Still there. Clear left. Definitely faster than him. The leader has just done a 133.8. The guy behind has just done a 134.0. Okay, well, 10 minutes to go. That's 10 minutes left. You're the man. Stay oh, on it. Come on. <laughs> Now I'm going to have to be careful this time because I know he brakes hard. The guy behind me is going to have to be aware of that too. I'm probably going to get, end up getting rammed from behind here so I'll leave a bit of space. I'll try to get him down the straight instead. So we know we're faster than him through that double right-hander, and I'm pretty sure I'm faster than him through the last few corners too. So we'll see if we can take advantage of it. Car left. Clear left. There we go. Alright, now we've got to try and make a break. Well done, Will. Good pass. Nice front. You're leading. That lap was a 133.8. My race to lose now. They're all battling behind me, so... All the time they're battling, they'll hold each other up. Oh, a little late there. That was not my best. <laughs> 0 0.4 of a second behind, but we've got to, we should get a good run through here, hopefully, and break clear of him. We've got a lapped car coming up ahead as well. See, that's the line I was going for. <laughs> 0 0.5 behind. Oh, this is the guy that we had the incident with, so hopefully he doesn't cause any problems. Hopefully he's not like waiting for me or something. Half distance, fuel looks good. We'll soon find out. These guys behind are still going at it. <laughs> Stick to the 
Man, don't be intimidated here. We're matching race pace. for it here, 1.3 second gap behind now. Scruffy again. All right, looks like Chris has made a uh, break away from them now, so he's gonna be right on my tail. He's not battling anymore. Yeah, looks like Chris and I are going to break away from the pack now. So, let's see what his pace is like. Barnes, he's reeling you in. The gap's now. Don't tell me that. Seven. Don't tell me that. Not too many laps to go now. Coming on to lap 7 out of 10. Keep it smooth. Now I downshift in that final turn to get slightly better rotation. It seems to help me, but let me know in the comments what That's you think because it seems kind of counterintuitive, but it does seem to help me. Okay, well, that's good consistency. Keep it up. Back on the throttle. It's counterintuitive there as well. You want to hit the throttle, it kind of plants the back end. Helps you around the corner a little bit better. That's ah, better. Five minutes remaining. Bring it on home. You're the man. Chris is definitely faster than me through there, though. He's all over me. Point five. He's going to slipstream here, though. We're catching up with uh, the guy from before as well now, which makes me nervous, seeing as we already had a bit of an incident with him earlier. Hopefully he doesn't do anything silly. I don't think he will, but you just never know. Keep him on the outside. Car left. Hold your line. Clear left. New fastest lap for Barnes. 133. Entry's compromised there, which means you'll have a fast to run out. One, two. two tenths off the pace in sector three. <laughs> He's got good pace. Might not be able to hold on to this one, I don't know. The other guys are back in contention now as well because I'm being defensive. All right. Still all over me. Whew. <laughs> Two laps to go. Here he comes. On your left. Still there. Still there. Hold your line. Clear left. Push, push, push or we'll lose this place. Push him to the outside. Here Still he comes. There. Hold your line. Still there. Clear left. You've just done a 134.1. Where Sector is three he? is 0.5 off the pace. 
Ooh. <laughs> How have we not collided? I don't even know. Just two minutes left, two minutes to go. What a race though. This is crazy. <laughs> One more to go after this. We've got a bit of a gap now, one second. That's the biggest gap we've had in a while. Hopefully we can take advantage of it. One point nine second gap in front, but I don't think, as long as he doesn't slow down, I think we'll be okay. Okay, well, you've used half your fuel. All right. Gilberto's back in front of him now. One more lap for the win. Come on. That's your fastest lap today. Sector one is 0.4 Ooh, off the come pace. On. Come on. Six gap behind, point one point one point five second gap in front. All right, we're good. I think we're okay. Woo! Couple more corners to go. We'll use the slipstream here to help tow us along. It's actually worked in our favour. You're in the lead. In the end, 0.6 behind still. Whew, what a race. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Finally a win! <laughs> awesome! And that was a really awesome battle too. We had to work well, for that well, one. Great win. You deserved that I, today. I knew that, I knew that we had the opportunity there because I knew that my uh, qualifying lap wasn't quite on my normal pace, but whew, that was a lot of fun. Let's, uh, let's jump in now, have a look at the replay, have a look at those incidents. Particularly where I rammed, uh, where I rammed uh, Gilberto, I think it was, in the backside. That wasn't great. He, uh, he slowed up a lot more than I was expecting him to. So we'll have a look at it. We'll see what I could have improved. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. But yes. <laughs> All right. So let's start with that crazy launch that uh, that guy got all the way from eighth position to first position by T1. Uh, now, you've seen me complain quite a bit about people hanging back and then launching off the start. But looking at this... Oh, jeez. So he just, he just, I mean, he just got lucked out basically with everybody slowing up. The leader, the Logitech car on the left there just slowed right up at the start, which held us, all of us up and he just gummed it all the way through. So, I mean, let me know what you think in the comments, but I don't think he really did anything wrong. Let's watch it once more. So, I mean, like he was right up there with the golf car in front. He didn't, he's gassed it here. Everybody else has slowed down and he's just gone straight through the middle. So, I mean, fair game. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not sure what the rules are gaining positions before the start line, but I mean, he didn't he didn't get a penalty or anything. So I think that's fair game. Let's have a look at what happened to the Logitech car on the outside there too. So yeah, I mean, he slowed right up there after the pace car had peeled in, which I'm not a big fan of. I generally think, you know, try to drive smoothly because it just creates a big concertina behind it. It causes so many accidents. But I mean, he's run wide there anticipating the other guy running wide maybe and just completely screwed himself out of the corner but he <laughs> just slotted through there that's me in the castrol car there almost uh made some content there Co content contact there as i uh, ran a little bit wide but we all made it through let's just watch that transition once more 
So through turn one, again, I'm the Castrol car there, car number two. He's come back on, obviously compromised in speed, and I've swept across, just made it. Oh, that was close. I could have, I could have gone on the brakes a little bit more to stop myself from running completely wide, but that was a bit lucky there. It was closer than I thought it was, to be honest with you guys. So <laughs> definitely a bit of luck involved there. So then end of lap one, this is where we had that incident, which is definitely gonna be interesting to unpack. So he was very slow mid corner there, got a terrible exit. I don't know if that was a little touch there or not, but then, whoa. I mean, he would have got the call car right. Let's have another look. So we'll start off here with a far chase on me. I always find that um, the car that you're following always, lo always looks like it's not their fault. And then you just switch to the other car and it looks different. So I don't think there was contact there. He doesn't have any damage. I didn't get any incident points for it, but he's got a car, car right call here. And then he's just turned in as if I'm not even there. So... I mean, again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. I think I had a right to be there. I mean, I would have had to, you know, break right out of that corner um, to avoid him. And uh, let, let's follow him as well, though, just to get the complete picture. So same speed again. Let's see if there was any contact there. I, again, it didn't register, but oh, if it wasn't, it was very close. But it hasn't upset his car at all, so I think that was fine. And then so at this point, he's got a car right call. I'm turning in and, whoa. I mean, I was a little bit wide of the apex there, admittedly, but I think he was going to come across. Yeah, I, let's look once more. So super slow-mo now. So he's already got the car right call. He's turning in. I'm a little wide. I could have been tighter, but I mean, I, I, I feel like at that point in the corner, maybe, but... Ultimately, he was going to come across knowing that I was there. I mean, he was, he was aiming for that apex as if I wasn't even there. So, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say, oh, I don't know, honestly. I'd, I don't want to call it as his fault because, you know, it definitely could have been tighter to the apex as well. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm happy to, I'm happy to take the blame for that one if you guys think I should. But you definitely could have left more space there as well. So maybe it's just a racing incident. Anyway, let's move on. So following on from that, we then got overtaken by those two cars that were ahead of us at the start of the race again. So uh, everything was back to how it was before that crazy start. So coming through the double right-hander now, I was carrying a lot more speed on the exit, ran the car out a little bit wider. You can see I got a really nice run up the inside of him here, or outside for this corner, but inside coming into the next turn. And I was able to utilize the slipstream here as well. You can see I was trying to make sure that I was slipstreaming the Logitech car up ahead to tow me past the red and white car, which worked really nicely. And even got alongside the Logitech car too, but decided it wasn't worth, because we're gonna transition across anyway, so it was better to just sort of tuck in behind him. Being mindful of what was going on behind me as well. And again, I'm carrying a lot more speed out the exit of that corner. But then I was a little bit compromised mid corner in the next one. So again, moving to the inside here, to force him towards the outside. Knowing that we're then gonna transition across to a left-hander again. So just trying to not ever give him an opportunity. So I was again, trying to just sort of coax him towards the outside of the circuit so he didn't stick his nose in. And then I'm pretty confident coming through the double right-hander here was where I uh, ended up running into the back of the Logitech car. So let's have a little look at that as well. That was a strange one. Oh, yeah, so, I mean, when I, when I was driving, let's, let's have another look. But when I was driving, it, it felt like he slowed up excessively on the apex there, and it just took me by surprise. But looking here, I'm not so sure. He's on the brakes later than I am, but slowing up way more mid-corner. Let's follow his onboard there and see if he actually had a moment or did something a little bit unusual. So riding on board with him now, let's see where he brakes. So he is, he's later on the brakes than I am, but then he's slowing up way more mid-corner. It was lucky that, that that contact didn't send him off. Let's have a look at from my onboard as well. All right. So. Yeah, I mean, he, he brakes late. I mean, we braked at the same time, but he was on the brakes later, obviously, on the track as he was ahead of me, but... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the speed delta there between the two of us on that apex just completely took me by surprise. So 
Yeah, it wasn't like he had a moment or did anything unusual. It was just he was a lot slower through that corner than I was. So, again, probably, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too harsh on myself, but, I mean, ultimately, I was the guy that hit him, right? So, my fault. So, that contact then slowed me up, which made me vulnerable down the straight again. So, again, just trying to cover off that inside line. And I knew by this point that he was driving, that this guy was going to drive, you know, respectably. So I knew that he wasn't going to try something absolutely stupid and just send it. So I was able to, you know, drive accordingly as well, which meant that I was able to hold on to the Logitech car in front as well. I was worried that if I was battling too hard, I'd end up dropping too far back and we'd both lose. So I wasn't going to defend massively aggressively because I knew that um, if, I could, if I could hold my normal pace... I'd be able to stay with the Logitech car and have the chance for the win. So let's just fast forward a little bit again. Oh, I was almost what I thought about it there, didn't I? Yeah, we'll fast forward again a little bit. Don't think anything happened this lap. I'm just coming through that double right-hander again. Let's just have a look, see what the uh, closing speed was like here. So we'll see the Logitech car pop up. So you can see again, I'm just carrying, and even then, I, the guys behind me almost hit me because I was having to slow up so much to avoid the Logitech car. So yeah, he's definitely just slower mid-corner there. That makes me, having seen that, that does actually make me feel a little bit better about it because he was very slow mid-corner there as well. And uh, it caught the guys behind me by surprise, but they were a little bit further back than I had been previously. So all good. Let's fast forward a bit. So coming through the last sequence of turns now, he uh, made some sort of a mistake on the exit of this turn, which cost him massively mid-corner speed. So I was already kind of all over him here, but yeah, you can see how much slower he was there and it was a very clean. So that's what I was planning on doing at the end of lap one, but it just kind of didn't play out that way. But he was very, con I'm not sure exactly what happened to him there. He just uh, was slow through the corner, but compromised him all the way down through here as well. Let's fast forward. So coming into the final sequence of turns again, you can see Chris is right up alongside. And around the, trying to around the outside now, get a switch back. Does he go for the switch back or does he just run it out? See the other car's in, con in contention now too. So it was all happening. Tucked in behind. Oh geez, that's... Now he's got the inside run. Yeah, nice. Fanatec car's got a sniff as well. <laughs> he's run right out wide there. Everybody's giving each other room though. That's what I love to see is like, there's a car width and then a little bit extra for net code. Really good to see. So after that, Chris did actually break away from those other two for a little while. And you can see he did actually end up catching up to me again. Now, I was managing my pace. I wasn't trying to do qualifying laps or anything. I was, I was, you know, at this point, I could see that he was on pace with me. I didn't want to make a mistake and end up with him passing me and not be able to get past again. So I was sort of concentrating on just covering my lines, making sure that he was uh, stuck behind me because I knew he wasn't fast enough to get by me unless I made a mistake or uh, left the door open. So have a look here and I was also trying to slow him up a little bit just to bring those other two guys back into contention again knowing that if he was under pressure from behind that would uh, ultimately slow him down and uh, make his uh, attack on me a little bit less aggressive too so there was a little bit of uh, strategy going on here which is another thing that I love about driving these slower cars is that you uh, you know if you do make a mistake you pay for it all the way down you know half a lap it can cost you so um, it makes the stakes a lot higher which makes strategy a lot more important. But let's have a look here at our relative speed through this corner. So you can see both of us just carrying so much more speed. He's actually got a better exit there than I have. So running right up alongside me, but again, not quite able to get ahead for the uh, for the transition across to the left hand. Uh, almost, you actually might have even been ahead of me just for a second there, but decided to tuck in behind rather than go for the apex there. I left room in case he did. And then again, just sort of trying to get the hammer down as quickly as I could, but he's got a nice run on the outside. He's trying to do exactly the same thing on me that he did to the Logitech car the lap before, run around the outside and then carry that transition across into turn one. But I'm focusing on my exit speed here and then I've closed the door on him relatively gracefully. Haven't absolutely slammed it shut. 
And then coming into the double right-hander, he dropped back quite significantly. So let's have a look at what happened there. I noticed he was a lot further back on the next straight, but oh yeah, he's run wide. A little bit too greedy there. And then that's going to have Logitech past him again, I think. And they never really caught up with me again after that. That was, uh, that was pretty much the end of the race. From this point on, I knew I had a big enough gap. I think it was out to about 1.5 seconds by now. So I knew that um, unless I made a mistake, they weren't going to get close enough again to uh, be able to challenge me on the final lap, which is exactly how it ended up playing out. So, yeah, a nice, uh, a nice clean, respectful battle there. I made contact with a couple of people, which uh, I'm sure you guys will crucify me in the comments for. Do let me know what you think about those two incidents because... Uh, I'm, I'm genuinely on the fence about them. I, I partly feel like it was my fault and partly feel like it was a racing incident or maybe even not my fault at all. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Be interested to read those, but let's have a look now at the results. Okay, so it was a single split race with a strength of field of 11.09. So the strength of field was quite a lot below uh, where I am at the moment, which is obviously why I was uh, contending up the front there. But having said that, the guys that we were racing were all similar kind of skill level at least as far as i rating is concerned to where we are so a couple of 2400 or another 2400 there and uh yeah i mean obviously these other guys that are lower rating here have more experience with this car than i do a more recent experience at least so they were on pace with me anyway and that's another thing that i enjoy about this car is you get there's various different skill levels which do tend to spice things up a little bit if you get into a good split if you get into a good split with uh, nice respectful people like these guys were but uh we got plus 45 on our i rating I was at 2,500 before I jumped into these cars earlier in the week, but we did have a few dodgy races. I made the mistake of uh, not bringing myself up to speed in practice properly before jumping into some races, and that cost me. So uh, my own fault there. But uh, look, pace-wise, uh, I wasn't the fastest guy. Uh, Gilberto, who was the guy in the Logitech car, uh, he got a 33.2. My fastest lap with slipstream around this circuit uh, in one of the previous races is a 132.8. Uh, so And qualifying normally... A really good lap for me is around about a 133 flat, 133 one or something like that. So, uh, yeah, definitely off my pace there, but I was uh, I was being a little bit defensive and uh, trying to make sure I didn't make a mistake either. But uh, definitely happy with the result overall there. A win is always a good thing. <laughs> but look, definitely interested to hear your comments on the race down below. And uh, yeah, leave a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this one. Make sure you subscribed as well so you don't miss out on future race videos just like this. And uh, yeah, let me know what you'd like to see me race uh, over the next couple of weeks. I want to try to get back into iRacing a little bit. I've been absolutely flat out with uh, kids' school holidays and review videos and things recently. So I haven't had a lot of racing uh, time, but definitely enjoyed this week uh, getting stuck into it again. So let me know what you'd like to see. And I will see you guys again in the next one. Bye.